In terms of our process, we used the book on such a full C and we made um, thought maps or big posters where um, each class we would read um, five or six pages and um, like take themes, so like direct quotes and themes that you saw in our presentation that um, that we saw in a novel. And then once we had the themes, we used them to connect them to Treehouse and how that could, like, we could bring that out in our presentation. So there's also a research component to it. Um, we did do a lot of research on what's down there, what's in the area, what Treehouse is all about. I think we stalked their Facebook page and everything about them before we went in and knew what we were getting ourselves into and what we wanted to do with. Um, but we, yes, the idea map, and then I think sometimes we just kept the only ideas that we had at that moment and just literally pondered them for a good 30 minutes and just sat there and just thought. Um, and then eventually an idea came. It'd be great. I think the little groups it was great for collaboration because somebody within those thirty minutes would think of something, and then that would spark a conversation. It's the domino effect, and it's just really powerful. I'm sorry that we're talking so much on this one topic, but it's it's really exciting because it's what the class is centered around. I think we start with this idea of empathizing. Um, you look into the novel and you try to find um, ideas that the author has put into words that can be applied to the broader community, specifically Treehouse. Um, and then you look to Treehouse and see what tangible change you can make or what tangible difference you can make with these tidbits that we've taken from the novel. Just piggyback off that, I think really good on that after this. Um, when you're reading English, when you're reading books a lot of the time in English, we kind of talk about some themes here and there. But this class really actually makes the book come to life in that sense, um, because we make it relatable. We read stuff, and as Lauren was saying, we empathize. By empathizing, you make it human. And so that's what makes this class so amazing, is that all of a sudden we can relate to these books, and we find purpose in what we're actually doing. Did you guys select the book yourself, or did Mr. Asaluka? Mr. Asaluka selected the book, and actually, side note, he was actually reading along with us the whole time, so he didn't know what the end result was going to be. So that was kind of fun as well, because we come along at a point, he'd be like, oh, well, that happened. <laughs> and like, with our process, the ideas that we thought of went from like huge ideas. Like Bridget talked about, we had an idea for a convention. Like, that's not <laughs> <laughs> so, so we like took that and then refined it. And so there were a lot of ideas going on, and we had to figure out something that was so that's really where most of the are. I just wanted to go back uh, on the topic of the class itself. I thought something that was really special about it is it uses literature in a new way. So personally, I'm not an English guy at all. I read the books and then I struggle and I try to sound smart, but it usually doesn't work. And when we're in his class, right, I'm reading this book and I don't have to come up with all these deep metaphors and stuff like that. I just read the book and whatever pops into my head, I can just apply that to a business plan. It's a completely new way of just reading in general and it's a new way to express your thoughts uh, through literature and I just thought that was really great. Um, I think speaking on behalf of Anthem anyway, it was important to us not to force connections and so we really, we kind of, our group at least went off the idea of like the funeral bringing community together and we really did um, actually like, make that connection and we didn't want to um, I don't know read part of the book and try and think okay like, well can we uh, make a connection between what we're doing in this book I and mean, it was important for it to be um, I guess organic in that one. Um, also something that I really liked about the classes um, that I think Mr. Austin said well was that he put us in groups that I mean, we're all we we're all friends before, and but now we're even closer. Um, and but the groups were like he chose them so that we would have diverse points of view, like views. Like we would all, <laughs> um, like everyone in the group came from somewhere different, and I think that was a really special thing because like now we're all super close in our group, and I think that was a great. Um, 
Um, one of the most interesting things, though, I think I noticed was that we had many different teachers shadow our class. One of them being a middle school science teacher. And so the, I, I know the middle school science teacher is wonderful when I was in his class in middle school. But um, he left the class absolutely in awe. Like he would, for a science teacher to relate to humanities is something so interesting that you don't really get to see <laughs> that often. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying in, in an environment where everything's so separated, bringing together all the different facets of education is really remarkable. And like what you can get from it is really crazy. It's just the last one, I promise. Um, I think it's really smart that a lot of your programming and fundraising ideas are not directly related to GA and don't necessarily just depend on the resources here since we're pulled in so many directions. Just one idea for our anthem to consider. Um, you know, I started playing around in my mind with how many candidates pizzas do we as a school order every single month? Um, and you know, could a pitch be made to candidates for a quarter of pizza? Um, and what does that look like? Right? If we say conservatively that it's 100 pizzas a month, that's really conservative. And, um, you know, that's 25 bucks to just pay for your website, just pay for your business cards, um, and just pay for a few other things that you need to, uh, to keep the program up. And it's costing them a quarter of pizza. Uh, but that quarter could make a really big difference, and they definitely benefit, we benefit from their fatty, great pizza, uh, but they certainly benefit from us being right around the corner and making 100 pieces of pop for a big event. Um, so it might be something you want to consider for Amazon as we more about Along with that, one of our ideas that we had talked about before getting to this dinner event was like talking to safes, and because uh, they're very uh, with us uh, in the GA community. Um, so we were talking about maybe having them do like a treehouse salad. So like every time someone orders this salad on the menu, like treehouse gets a portion of that specific wow. item. And so that was something that we talked about. It was my mom's idea. <laughs>
To me, I couldn't imagine doing that. Uh, so, but Mike and Lauren, they both had them doing all these special things, and I definitely think we would convey that in a pamphlet or on the website in a video. Um, yeah, I think it's most of their passion to read can be attributed to Mike and Lauren. It's truly like a wonder to watch them run that place with 10,000 screaming kids with all this energy coming back from school and ready for break, and yet they're still able to get them to read and write and put on an open mic night. And some kids actually wrote their own song and performed it all within like, was it a week or two weeks? It was really, it, one week. It was really impressive. I mean, it was a good song too. Like, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy it on iTunes. But, I don't know, it's just, well, you really have to go down and visit to get the feeling for it. And we can convey as much as we can through pictures and videos but really go down there and just visit, it's amazing. Um, one of the reasons that we think that, sorry. No. <laughs> um, that like the kids are so passionate about Treehouse uh, is because, well, Peel talked about this a little bit, but it's kind of their third space. So it's in between school and home where they can go to relax and really like learn without feeling the pressure from school to learn because it's a whole different environment. Like when you're reading a book for fun versus reading a book for school, it's completely different. So that third space gives them the experience that they need to like explore the books and do whatever they want with them. And it's just really great for them to have that third space, which is why I think that they love it so much. You're good. Sorry. Um, oh, okay. You're good. Wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mike's speaking later, so I feel like this is the only time I'll get to sort of say what I want to say. But um, I think that each of you has grown a lot. Mike and I are just, we're in awe because it is a lot of work, like between the two of us sometimes it feels literally impossible. And the fact that 15 people took on some of that weight for six months, like you gave us some breathing room. It's, it's huge, so thank you. Um, and I love how all of your things are intertwined. You're like, we can only do this with feel, we can only do this with Big V, and like, I was really looking for that. You can't do anything in isolation. Um, and I'm telling you that the things that you thought of, they're going to happen in whatever way that they happen. We will make sure that they are put to use. And I mean, like the website, I, I was tearing because I hate going to our website. I do. I don't like it because I don't think it, it shows our kids. And the website showed our kids. So thank you for letting me see them in that way. It was awesome. <laughs> Um, I want to thank our jumpers again. Thank you so much for their...